Hi. Okay. Uh, today I'd like to talk about our trip to the biggest show in the world, the Miami Beach Show, and uh, our adventures there. So I walked a lot at that show. I checked out everything that uh, was silver related, and at times I have found treasures there. And every year it seems like it's harder to find that really, really rare item. This year some of the better things were, I bought a chocolate pot made by Tiffany with a Middle Eastern look to it uh, with gold highlights. And it was pictured in the Carpenter Tiffany book. Very, you know, really a piece of art. I bought tea caddy, that was Tiffany, many butterflies on it. Uh, some of the butterflies were gold, some of the butterflies were copper. Uh, that was one of my, my favorite things also. One thing that was kind of appropriate for, for down there is I bought uh, some pieces of the pattern Palm Beach by Gorm. It's a pattern from early in the 20th century. Uh, looks like palm trees, looks like palm leaves on the back of the pieces. This is a salad set. You know, it's well done. Here's a, some little chocolate spoons in the, in the Palm Beach pattern. You know, someone from Florida, you know, very appropriate. In American silver, one of the rarest forms is a marrow scoop. I always buy them if, if I find them. So I found two down there. Uh, this one's by Schiebler. It looks like a musical instrument and then it has uh, ribbons on the middle. And so, you know, very rare form, you know, in our collection of hundreds of thousands of pieces. I think uh, right now we have two or three American marrow screws. It's a whole different story when you get to English or European. Marrow scoops are everywhere, you know. But American marrow scoops, very rare. Okay, the other one that I really like is this one. So this one is a very rare pattern. I didn't even know the name of this pattern for many, many years. It's called Hindu. Um, it's an 1870s, 1860s pattern by Gorham. This one, it's beautifully gold washed and stippled. It's a, a rare double marrow scoop. Um, this one is dated on the center area here, 1875, and all bright cut. I believe this, you know, in all the years, uh, this is the first double marrow scoop American that I've ever seen. I've, had, I've seen a fair number of singles, but doubles, hmm, I just don't recall any. It's possible sometime I had one, but, you know, certainly not recent. Okay, I found items, but continuing the, oh, sort of, sort of the way things have been, it's been harder and harder to find that rare item. Last year, I talked about this new book that came out, which is an arts and crafts book by smaller makers, primarily in the center part of this country, and also I would say featuring Chicago. So, you know, Arts and Crafts is a great look, but I like things a little more decorated. While Kalo, which is the biggest and considered the best, I admire it. I, there's other things I like better. So when I got this piece of Kalo, I was really excited because I've never seen anything like it. Here is a Kalo page turner and unlike most pieces of Kalos, this, this has flowers on it. I never saw anything like this before. I think it's the most interesting piece of Kalo I've ever owned. On the back, it, said, it has a date, July 4th, 1916, and then it says Kalo Sterling M. And so I talked to a friend of mine who you know, really is an authority on Kalo, and he said, oh, this is part of the Nordic line. I had never heard of the, the Nordic line, and so looked in 
this new book about the Nordic line. I looked online at the Nordic line. It's a little more decorated than the normal kilo. It has more of a Scandinavian look to it. But uh, I found nothing that was even close to this piece. And uh, my friend who I have seen a lot of Kilo in the years said he never saw anything like it either. So, so something I think very interesting from Ch Chicago. Okay. Then also very uncharacteristic of Chicago silver is this piece. So normally arts and crafts from Chicago, that's what we think of. Here is a piece by a very almost unknown company, the Northwest Silver Company, Silver Manufacturing Company of Chicago, Illinois, 1865 to 1871. So a very short time. So here's a berry spoon and or, or a fruit scoop with uh, bright cutting, but what really makes it stand out is this really good looking lion on the top. So so here's you know 1860s, 1870s silver that you always think of as you know Gorham or some other Eastern maker. And here it was actually made very close in Chicago. I tried to find the information that I could about this company and it's very little information. One of, uh, here's a tax record from Illinois, didn't, didn't have anything that really interests me. And then there's this site called um, Sterling Flatware Fashions and Facts that talks a lot about silversmiths, shows many, many patterns. It's a really good site to see. Sterling Flatware Fashions and Facts. Over 2,000 silversmiths information on it. Again, um, if you go if you go to like a silversmith like Gorham, it'll go on for page after page after page of information. For this, they have two lines, and uh, but the interesting thing is it does have a picture of the building where it was made in Chicago. Uh, it's a four-story building, looks like quite a big structure. It's, you know, the fact that I've never heard of the business, I've never saw a piece of their silver, when they did, you know, something that was really great, you know, sort of surprised me. And, but, you know, I always say, I say very often, I say, every day in this business, I find things that I never saw before, and uh, that's what keeps it interesting. Thanks.